Welcome to our podcast, Inspiring Living, with me, Mark Candelaria. I am an architect, blogger, traveler, chef, father, and husband. I am the founder and now partner of a fabulous 20-person architecture firm specializing in high-end residential architecture, designing amazing homes across the country. We have hosted tours over the last 20 years to Italy, Spain, and soon Napa. And in the course of all this, I have met a lot of interesting people who truly inspire me. We are excited to now be in our second season, and our podcast is about all the opportunities that are right there in front of us to inspire living. Yes, we will talk about architecture and design, but every week we will venture to all sorts of topics that will inspire you, teach you, and motivate you to inspire living every day. My guests will include a wide gamut of amazing people from those in the design industry to clients to real estate professionals, chefs, artists, sports figures, and philanthropists and people who just flat out get it. So sit back and enjoy, and let's have some fun exploring all the opportunities that are there just waiting for us. Please subscribe and get ready to be inspired every week. Okay, as my dad says, here we go. Welcome, everyone, and thanks again for listening to our podcast, Inspiring Living. Welcome to our second season of podcasts, and I wish all of you a very happy Valentine's Day. My Valentine got on a plane today and is headed to northern Georgia for a spiritual workshop with several others from the Phoenix and Tucson area. And so we will be celebrating from afar, but we will get Isabel back on the podcast when she gets back so she can share some of the work and discoveries from this very cool workshop, okay? All right, today's podcast features organic chef and caterer Jennifer Johnson. She's the founder of Witnessing Nature in Food, an organic farm-to-table catering company, which has become a leader in healthy organic dining experiences. The quality of our food and, and the food supply chain is becoming more and more critical to our health and survival. The global pop- population has grown from 1 billion in 1800 to 7.8 billion in 2020. It is expected to keep growing and estimates have put the total population at 8.6 billion by mid 2030, 9.8 billion by mid 2050, and 11.2 billion by 2100. So you can see how the doubling rate is just progressing. We are not making any more farmland. And so the question is, how are we going to feed all these people? And can we do it organically, GMO-free, pesticide-free? I firmly believe this is one of our greatest struggles the rest of the century. Our commitment to high-quality food and the benefits to our health are well-known. And our guest gives us some interesting perspectives on this very provocative and timely topic. Okay, give this a listen and direct message me your thoughts and give our podcast a review. Okay, here we go. Okay, today we have with us organic chef and caterer, Jennifer Johnson. She is the founder of Witnessing Nature and Food, an organic farm to table catering company, which has become a leader in healthy organic dining experiences. They've been recognized as a platinum level Phoenix Green Business Leader, a City of Scottsdale Environmental Quality Award winner, Local First Green Business Certified, and featured in Green Living Arizona Magazine, the Chicago Tribune, Fox 10 News, and Channel 3 News, just to name a few. That's quite that's quite an entourage right there. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, welcome, Jennifer. Glad you could join us on Zoom on our podcast. And I've got my daughter, Tiffany, here, who's also going to join us and pipe in a little bit. So when you hear some uh, additional voices, that's who we've got with us today. So welcome again, Jennifer. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. This is great. And I love uh, I love being able to see all of you. And we're socially distanced, so we're doing we're doing our job, so that's all good. Okay, so you share on your website your lifelong dedication to supporting eco-conscious, chemical-free living, and how this was how was this sparked in you at an early age, Jennifer? Tell us about your story. So I grew up in a small little, you know, two blinking red light town. Um, we didn't even have a hospital. I was born in the next town over. Um, and one of the things, the only reason why we were called a city is because we had a um, corporation there, which was the St. Louis Chemical. And the St. Louis Chemical dumped chemicals into the Pine River for years and years and years. And it caused all kinds of issues ecologically, um, even to the point where our water table um, smelled of dead fish. Wow. And when you take a shower or whatever, you would smell dead fish. I realized this when the first time I ever drank alcohol when I was a teenager. And um, when you go to take a shower, pretending like you have not ever done anything to your parents and then realize all of a sudden you're going to be sick. Yeah. So, um, 
so yeah, so it was, it was not good. And even until, um, I think it was 2017, they finally got a super fund that or super pack super fund that was going to take care of cleaning out the river. So that's just from when I was a kid to in the, in the seventies until, um, 2017 to get somebody to actually really take a serious, wow. um, no. And so for organic, for me, it's not so much about GMOs as much as it is about not having chemicals in your Period. food. Right. And it's a big problem, isn't it? I mean, it is a huge food, problem. I mean, Tiff and I talk about this all the time. I mean, we've all got food allergies. We all got, you know, we're all dealing with this and our food. I travel to Italy every year or I have been except for last year. And the difference <laughs> in, the, in the food is just amazing. I feel so much better. Yeah. I don't you feel like eat so much more. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So, I mean, I guess what we were talking about the other day, and I want to get totally off subject here, but, uh, you know, I think we struggle with the fact that we've got to feed so many people in this world and how are we going to do it effectively and, and, and efficiently and, and cost, you know, cost effectively. And so I guess that's been the rationale to justify using all these chemicals to produce foods that are getting, you know, that's what I hear. That's the argument I hear. Well, the justification for me about using chemicals is not necessarily that, except for the fact that they want to um, plant the same crop year over year over year versus you have to change your crops out in right. order to make sure that, because um, clover, it brings a different kind of um, bug chemical or brings a different kind of if you plant clover, then clover brings different um, um, enzymes to the earth that prevents uh, insects of a different kind. And then you plant something else um, to prevent insects of a different kind for the next crop that's going to come and so on. So it's about yeah. complementary complementary um, planting. So maybe you can't in that one section plant wheat year over year over year. Right. And so... So GMOs to me, I don't necessarily agree 100% with all GMOs. However, we have been splicing plants together for thousands of years in order to create new types of varieties of different plants. Right, right. Whether it be flowers or, or, or vegetables whatever. or whatever. So in some regards, it's okay. It, it depends. It, it totally depends on what their purpose is. Right. And what they're doing. So now I don't necessarily agree that um, Monsanto should be putting small farmers out of business because the GMO happened to end up in their farm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So you had this you had, you, you had this knowledge of what was going on in, in when you were growing up in St. Louis. How did that spark your interest in all this? I mean, what what got you so passionate about this whole direction in your life? Because there's just so many chemicals that in the environment that have caused all sorts of cancers and people to not be able to you know, have kids or um, small children having cancer. Um, and, and people just hide that because they don't want to be responsible. Right. Right. And it's just not it's not OK that they pay people off in order to. Yeah. In order so, to move forward, feeding them, say, oh, it's, it's totally fine for you. Right. No, it's, 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 it's bad. <laughs> That's all I can say. And, you know, where everyone tries to go organic and even the organic symbol and, you know, designation these days, you know, we really don't know if we can trust it anymore. There are always going to be somebody that rides the line. Right. Of what is just under the organic section exactly. so that's why i that's why i do a lot of things with local farmers because there's some of the farmers that i use that are not necessarily certified organic because it's too expensive for them but mm -hmm. i go out and talk to them and say hey how are you growing this we do seasonal vegetables um i want to know what chemicals they're putting in the ground if they're using chemicals um and we go out and we talk a great deal because knowing your farmer and where you're getting your food from yep and supporting the local environment brings far more nutrition to your table sure. than getting something from Malaysia. Right. So in terms of like the percentages of farmers that you come in contact with, what percentage would you say are committed to farming organically and farming pesticide free and are really, you know, into the whole idea of what you're, what you're talking about? 
Is it a lot of them, um, or is, that, is it just the small farmers that are doing this, or you know, are the big? Oh, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. So there are there are several farmers that are certified organic in Arizona, okay. and then there are some farmers that are working on becoming certified organic. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Is um, it quite a process? Is it hard to do? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. It can take it can take a period of time because depending on how long the earth has had chemicals in it, it takes yeah. a period of time to get it out. So right. I think that um, one of the things that's been a huge problem, like in California, is if non-organic seeds end up in an organic land or when they spray mm -hmm. and they crop dust, the wind brings it into yeah. an organic farm, then they end up with produce raised organically that potentially could be have non-organic chemicals on them that are no longer the worth the value of mm. what yeah it's really tricky they've been grown at. are our farms um charged to be certified like is there a fee they have oh absolutely it's very expensive it is oh. very expensive wow the, farm, the fact that we pay the fact that we pay what we pay at the grocery store is totally amazing to me because farmers have to keep track of the water they put into the earth, they have to keep track of the uh, seeds that they put into the earth. And then that before, when they crop, when they pick it, they have to test it all for all of the diseases, right? Um, salmonella and uh, whatever health yeah. board or food borne you, diseases so there buy, are. When you buy a head of lettuce for, let's just say, I don't know, how much does a head of lettuce cost these days? Dollar and a half, two bucks? Yeah. You know, it's gone think, about, think about what, what, what went into getting that head of lettuce from mm -hmm. the ground to you, having to do all the things you just talked about, and it's only $2. Exactly. I'm surprised that <laughs> the food costs what it is. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I think there's plenty of people, I know us in particular, we try to buy as much organic as we possibly can. My wife, you know, was diagnosed with breast cancer that went to brain cancer, and she's got a lot of food allergies. Tiff, you've got food allergies. I mean, People need to value their food. I mean, it's 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 what's keeping you alive. It's what's nourishing your body. <laughs> but I will tell you, through this pandemic, there's a lot more people asking for organic, and they're not oh, yeah. caring so much about the about the price anymore. Yeah, it's changed, hasn't it? It definitely has in the past year. Yeah. So, what sparked your interest in cooking, and what's your favorite style of cuisine to cook? What what got you into the whole cooking notion? <laughs> so, I'm an electrical engineer. I oh, went to wow. school to be an engineer. Yep, yep. I went to school to be an engineer mainly because my dad said I couldn't. And um, I have seven brothers and they, um, I was the oldest girl and uh, my sister's the youngest girl. And um, I guess I'm just uh, resilient that way that uh, I've proved, I go out to prove what I can't, what I'm told I can't do. Yep. Um, yeah. And, <laughs> or stubborn, take your pick. <laughs> um, and really I finished college and my son, my youngest son um, said I stayed home with him for a couple of days to you know, cook for him because of all the time I'd spent away from uh, going to school at night and doing different things. Um, I just said, I want to spend a couple of days with him. And he's like, you know, mom, can you just, um, can you just please make it out of the box? Because that's so much better. There you go. And I kind of, and I kind of brushed it off at the time going, ha ha ha, you're funny. But then in my mother's day card, cause I graduated in, um, early April, my Mother's Day card a few weeks later said, I love my mom for all these reasons. However, I wish she wouldn't cook, <laughs> but it's not really good. Oh, boy. <laughs> You've although come I a long way. The, I think, although I think he used the word sucked in the, in the Mother's Day card. So you your food sucks, mom. <laughs> yeah. So that, so had to spark, I, that had to spark your interest. If you like a challenge, that must've got you going. Yeah. <laughs> So I was really mad. I was really mad for a few days. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I realized that, you know, my mother, for all the wonderful qualities she has, was not a good cook. Huh. My grandmother, for all the wonderful qualities she had, was not a good cook. My grandfather, however, is a fantastic cook. However, because of the mess he made, nobody allowed him in the kitchen. Aww. <laughs> so so he was allowed to make uh, biscuits and need gravy need on occasion. You needed to break this, this, uh, this streak. You had, to, you had to take it over. I did. Yes. Yes. And I went to culinary school and continued on with my corporate stuff. And then when 
the corporate thing no longer was fulfilling for me because my kids basically moved out and went to college and was wow. in the Navy and did their thing. I all of a sudden became like, you know what? I really started cooking for the people at work. And then I started catering some of their meals and some of their dinners and their weddings. And then one day I said, you know what? I just want to do this. Huh. Cool. So you went. So they you went they from, like your cooking. <laughs> you went from corporate America to, to catering. I mean, to uh, culinary school, right? How, yes. That would be a big difference. I mean, in terms of just thinking and the whole the whole thing. Was it, was it intimidating at first? Because it's something I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to go to culinary school. I love to cook, and you know, I, I don't. I don't think it was intimidating. I think it was fascinating. Yeah, I will say fascinating because of all of the different spices and different things you can put together. And even if it's not spice, the different flavors of foods you can combine. Um, it just made me, and I love food. I love food, I love wine. So there's no, those are my two favorite things. Yeah, well, we'd get along just, just perfectly, Chef. <laughs> so, so from culinary school, so how long did culinary school last? Um, about, because I had already graduated from school, so, um, I didn't have to take some of the basic things, so it probably about 18 months or so. Okay. And where was this at? I went to Scottsdale Culinary. Oh, you did go to Scottsdale Culinary. Yeah. Okay. Really? I've been here for 32 years. I've been here for 32 years. So, yeah, Scottsdale Culinary is where I went. Good. What, so, did you, did you like it? I did. I loved it a great deal. How many people, like, how many people are in the class? And, like, if I went, if I went to go sign up for Scottsdale Culinary... How many people well, would be in Scottsdale it? Culinary doesn't exist anymore. I think it's um, became Le Cordon Bleu and now yeah. it's out of business. But um, oh, at the time, I want to say there was, you know, 12, 15 people in the class. Okay. Um, my son also, my son who called me a, a sucky cooker, yeah. um, he also is a chef and he went to um, Art Institute of Phoenix, which is now I also think defunct. Huh. Um and I think there was um, between 15 and 20 people in each one of his classes. Wow. Well, do you have a place to recommend that's actually in business in town? Um, honest to God, I think that right now the best place that we've gotten interns from is Scottsdale Community College. Yeah. That I think they have. And Evit. Hmm. Evit has some problems. So Matt spent some time at Evit doing um, culinary, culinary competitions when he was in at Gilbert High School. Okay. And then um, um, he went to Art Institute of Phoenix. Okay. My dad's taking notes. <laughs> yeah. I think that Scottsdale, I think that Scottsdale Community College right now has the best culinary program. Yeah. I, I've always been impressed with Scottsdale Community College. We get a lot of our CAD people and drafting people from them. From And they're, they're oh, wow. perfectly. I mean, it's, they're, I think for the value, Scottsdale Community College is, is amazing. To be honest with you. Yeah, I've heard their yeah. film school is like the best. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so from catering or from culinary school, I keep saying catering, from ca culinary school, where did you go? Where did you, how did you then make your trajectory for your career from, from food? Um, so I still stayed in corporate America for 20 years. I was a wow. chef for 20, 20 years. I still stayed in corporate America. And then I, I started a catering company in 2015. Huh. So you immediately went on your own. Yeah, yeah. I left and said, what do I want to do? And that's what made me happy. So food, baking food for people and cooking for people make me happy. Yeah, we understand that one. We know how that one works. <laughs> so, so after, so you went to culinary school, 20 years of corporate America, cooking all along the way, it sounds like. And yep. then one day you just woke up and just said, this is it. I'm, I'm going to go and start my own catering business. Um. It's not necessarily how it worked out, but <laughs> that uh, but um, it's what I decided I was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about that. Where you didn't? Did you have already a repertoire of people that you knew, and then you just started? They say, "Hey, can you, Jennifer? Can you come cook for us? We have a dinner for six. Yeah. Blah blah blah. We'll Absolutely. Work from the bake and yeah. So we kind of know that gig, don't we, Tiff? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then at one meeting one day, I, uh, I think at Foxy Women in Wine, I uh, met Dory from Green Living Magazine. Uh -huh. and she, connected to me, uh, she connected me to all of her green friends. And it's just kind of gone from there. I mean, Dory and I've been, I don't know, besties for, I don't know, six years now. Excellent. Nice. So your, your focus, though, is clean, healthy, farm the table type food. It is. Absolutely. 
So tell us about that a little bit. So I just want to make sure that the food that people eat is nutrition dense. Mm -hmm. I, I can make you a fattening meal, but I would like you to have some nutrition in it. <laughs> not just fat and um, not just fat and carbs. I just would like you to have some nutrition in it as well. Right. So a lot of people think that organic is a completely is a diet or some of some sort. Um, I can make you a very fattening meal with organic food. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Grass fed, grass fed sustainable food. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I can make that, but I just want to make sure that people are getting nutrition out of the food that they're eating right. and they're not, they're not implementing um, or ingesting a ton of chemicals right. because I think that you already have enough in your environment, whether it be the air or being in your car and so on, that your body already has enough to fight and it yeah. shouldn't have to fight something that you're eating. Right. You should enjoy it. And also I believe that if you start with good ingredients, the food just tastes better. Yeah. So true. you don't have to doctor it up. You don't have to do anything like that. You just, it just tastes better. Right. <clears throat> so a lot of times when people hear organic or like, like what Tiff and I are kind of working on, gluten-free, they automatically think it's going to taste horrible. You know, it's not going to have any flavor. I mean, how do you dispel that? Because I, I agree with you. I think, I think in some ways it has gotten kind of a bad name or not a bad name, but just, a bland name, you know, it's like organic, gluten-free, John GMO. Oh, okay. It was not going to taste very good. And I go, no, no, it's just like what you said. I don't think, I don't believe that. I think that a lot of people watch marketing a great deal and right. it's unfortunate. I think one of the, the biggest things that has always bothered me the most is when they use the words natural. Yeah. Because there's the, the milk commercial, right? It says dairy naturally from a cow. I'm like, really? Where else would it come from? <laughs> chemical plant yeah they like to plug that word natural that's yeah. naturally grown well what does that mean yeah. and when i start asking i start asking questions like that people go oh well i, I don't know i'm like natural. <laughs> it's just the buzzword for marketing yeah so i think that people watch a great deal of tv i mean we have a huge obesity problem in this country we have a pandemic yes but we have a huge obesity problem of a high blood pressure um, heart disease and all kinds of other things that nobody cares about. We still have all of the fast food commercials on TV. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, when you look at our food and what, what, what most people are eating, it's full of sugar. It's full of processed chemicals and, and processed food. You, preservatives. You wonder, yeah. Preservatives. That's the other thing. It's just the preservatives in our food. Exactly. I had somebody come to me one day and go, oh, it has all these organic things in it. I said, yeah, but what are these last five ingredients in here? They look like a lot of chemicals. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's amazing so, when something can sit on your shelf for a month and a half and it doesn't spoil. It's like, wow, it's pretty amazing. Exactly. I hope I last that long, you know? <laughs> right. Oh, exactly. So tell us more about your company. Why organic farm to table food? Why is farm to table food so important to you? Um, I really, I really want to make sure, like I said, people have nutrition dense meals and that they enjoy their food without having, I mean, you shouldn't have to have a ton of uh, sauces on things in order to taste the food and have the, the real flavor of the food right. come out. You should be able to use complementary foods in order to um, enjoy your food. Uh, you don't, shouldn't have to, I mean, I have a brother that the first thing he does when I make a steak is he takes out the A1 and he pours. I'm like, he, I'm like, I take that bottle away from him. I'm like, you are done. No. Yep. You're not no allowed A1 to around anything. our house. That's for sure. You're not allowed to touch any of that. Have you tasted the food yet before you put salt on it? <laughs> so. So how do you, how do you go about finding the farmers? Like, how do you know which farmer to reach out to? And I'm sure, I'm sure over time you've got your repertoire of, of good farmers, but how did so, you start that whole process? I go to local, um, farmers local markets. markets, farmers yeah. markets. Yeah, absolutely. And I sit there. and I talk to them. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And the farmer market um, scenario here in Arizona and Phoenix in particular has gotten much better over the years I've lived here. I mean, we go to Vincent's market when he was having it before COVID. And like, you know, Scott still has a nice market. There's a one up on North Central sometimes on mm -hmm. Saturday morning. I think it's called Midtown, and then there's a downtown Phoenix. Yeah, and Uptown it's Market. Town. There's Phoenix, Phoenix Public Market, Uptown Market. Mm -hmm. Uptown Market happens to be one of my favorites, but there's Phoenix Public Market, Uptown Market. Scottsdale can and cannot be my favorite, but um, I mean, I get 
I get all my beef from here in Arizona. And then I go to Chula Seafood to get my seafood. Yep. Um, um, most where, of my vegetables. Where is Chula Seafood? I've heard of that. So there's one on Central and... Camelback, right? Camelback, you're right. And then there's the one North over here North. on Hayden and Thomas, I think. Oh, okay. I didn't know there was one over there. Yeah, their stuff is really good. You know, I love their stuff. I'm it's all AJ's, sustainable. I'm a big AJ's fan. I like AJ's quality. Mm -hmm. they've, they've got some good, they've got some good organic stuff there. So I try to fish through it all. Um, I know there's Whole Foods and my wife loves Whole Foods. So she, she goes there, but we love the markets. And when we travel, as Tiff knows, <laughs> one of our big priorities is always it's to find a market. It's to stay oh in town God. and have a good farmer's market. Like we, we can't vacation somewhere if they don't have a farmer's market. <laughs> I'm with you. Right? So if our listeners wanted to curate a special catered meal or small party, what options do you provide and what could they expect? What do you like to cook? What do you like to prepare for people? Everybody's different. But I find that most of my customers, when they want to have a special party, they want to have a fantastic steak and they want to have a fantastic, some sort of fantastic seafood. So like um, the they can cook turf. chicken most, I'm sorry? You like the surf and turf uh, direction. I do, but I usually have an Italian or a French kind of flair that go along with it, depending on what it is. Yeah, because okay. that's your preferred style, right? Yeah, so I have a condo in France, and um, we Ooh. spend some time there, not in the last couple of years, of course, but, yep. um, and then my um, partner is from Italy, so okay. um, we spend our time there, too, um, and I traveled, when I was in corporate, I was had the luxury of traveling all over the world, so learning different kinds of styles of food, um, I took some cooking classes in France, um, and just totally enjoyed I just enjoy food in general and learning yeah. about how different people live and live and work and eat. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. And so in Italy, where's your partner from in Italy? Milan. Milan. Okay, northern Italy. So totally different food from central Italy or southern Italy. Totally different. And I will <laughs> tell you that he's he will say every once in a while, "Oh, this is a southern Italian dish." Oh yeah. I'm like, is that like bad? No, no, it's just different. Just different. Like, yeah. Okay. Just like in the United States. <laughs> yep. If you go further north, there's more butter. If you go further south, there's more olive oil. Exactly. And, and everything in between. Yep. So, and then in France, we're, we're in France. We're, we're, we're Paris you? for the most part. Paris. Paris really okay. Paris. Yeah, it's beautiful. And quite different. I mean, the cooking in, I mean, the cooking in, in Paris from the cooking in Italy, from the cooking in Spain. I mean, it is amazing. Even in Spain, in the, in the, in the country itself. <laughs> it changes dramatically from north to south, you know? So true, so true. Yeah, I love all of it. How often do you cook dinners for people? How often do you cater? Um, so we do school lunches every day, and then we have catering, typically Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and most of the time Sunday. So uh, we keep a full, bu full busy week. Yeah, so like on a Saturday night, I'm assuming you do one dinner for a group or do you have? Well, we used to do, we used to do a lot of um, big group caterings like weddings and things like that. But now there's a ton of family meals. And so you do a lot of uh, people cook in the backyard and they yep. have a party over. And uh, so anywhere from, anywhere from where from six to, you know, 25 people. Okay. 25 has been your biggest. Um, we've catered as many as a thousand people before, but um, right now with the, with the pandemic, People are really keeping stuff down around 25. Yeah. And then you have a big team, so you can accommodate like a whole wedding and everything. Right, right. And okay. then plus, you know, as far as restaurants or even catering, I mean, you have a set of people that you call and say, hey, I need this extra staff so that you can have servers and things like that. Right. Okay. Totally. So right now, a lot of it is outside. Outside or small group, smaller groups inside. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So let's just say... I had a little event and I wanted to call Jennifer. How do I start? How do I, how do I initiate the whole thing with you? Do you have a set menu or do I say, hey, oh, I have a, friends that have really a, like this. Can you make this for us or how do you do it? So either way, I mean, we have a, a set menu that, um, and we're getting ready to update it a bit for the, um, for the spring, uh -huh. but, um, but we have a set menu and then, but there's still, I mean, we do a lot of things that, 
we don't even have the menu for so because it's like one off or people don't ask for it very often like right now I'm doing some Caribbean food which I don't typically do but I I mean I know how to do but I don't yep. typically do very often but I'm doing a bunch of Caribbean food tomorrow for um, a group of 50 people wow 50 people that's such a, so so what would that entail what kind of a recipe or what kind of a menu so we're doing jerk chicken okay um, that would have been my first guess Jerk chicken, but I didn't do this time um, whole chicken. I just did chicken breasts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I did, uh, I do a white and brown jasmine rice mixed together with some peas and some cilantro. And then we made a jicama, um, a jicama mango salad. Wow. So when you, when you put these together, I mean, one of the things that I think is always really fun about cooking is, you know, there's the whole idea of the recipe itself, but then the presentation is so important, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you, what are some of your favorite things about that? I mean, what, what do you think about when you think about putting a meal together, you think about the recipe and then I'm sure you strategize the, the presentation. Recipe as well as layering. So yeah. we do some layering depending on what the, you know, the starch and the vegetables are. We layer things together. The sauce is um, and then I love microgreens. Okay, just the look. Microgreens are of fantastic on just They're about anything. Nutrient dense. <laughs> exactly, and microgreens are just beautiful, and they taste so good, and they're so fresh. So then, when you do the you do the dessert too, I'm assuming. Do you? What do you? Okay, so here's one of my things: is I'm not a good baker. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a bad baker. It's just not one of my favorite things to do. So I, I notice some chefs are really good. they really are either you know, the entree and the appetizers, but they don't get into the desserts. Do you, do you have a favorite part of the, of the dinner or the menu that you love to focus on? I prefer to cook the entrees and the, and the appetizers. However, I do have a select 10 to 15 desserts that I'm really good at. Right. That and I really good. don't veer very far from that. Yep. That's <laughs> kind of my formula too. I've got my, my four or five dessert favorites that I can knock off and I know they're going to always be good. And people are always going to love them. Uh, but I don't spend a lot of time on the dessert side because I'm so focused on the entree side all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, like flourless chocolate cake. My, I had a pastry chef at one point and she taught me how to do a flourless chocolate cake that is to die for. Oh and, um, and she taught me how to do that. So it's, I mean, a lot of people request that. And then I do a lot of fresh things like almond cakes as well as fresh fruit, ice cream yeah um just so we, some real different dark dark chocolate brownies chocolate cook, chocolate chip cookies chocolate chip cookies stuff with ricotta um so let me ask you this as i i always have because i think the most we've ever cooked for at a sit down dinner was 30 one of our clients had her birthday party and tiff you were there for that night oh yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was pretty that was pretty tough we did we did uh beef tenderloin and uh, honey glazed carrots and risotto. Ooh, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. a good, good meal. And it, we did we did a good job. I and mean, that was the biggest meal that we did sit down. I've done paella for three hundred with little cups. You know, no right, problem. right. Uh, but a sit down dinner where you're doing courses, you know, salad and yeah, and there were just four of us. Stressful, you know. It's a, so that's my, very stressful. Yeah, because you have to get everybody served within a certain period of time, right? Right, right. And nothing you want anything cold. You want it all nice and hot. So one of my greatest fears, and okay, I've got two things here. Um, one of my greatest fears, obviously, is failure, whether it's cooking or in life, you know. And so, have you ever have you ever had a, a, a disaster like where oh my god, it just all went wrong and it was just so bad? And has that ever happened? She doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. I want to say. I would have to say that knock on wood, not everything went wrong. Yeah. There's been times when a few things go wrong because yep. best laid plans can yep. always go upside down. But um, I think the biggest problems I've had is with uh, around service staff. The yeah. food could be ready and available, but the service mm -hmm. staff doesn't get it to where it needs to be on time. Yep. Or we don't have it ready for the service staff on time. Um, 
and they're waiting and it's, you're stressed. And they're waiting, yeah. That yep. that always makes me the saddest. But the food, the for food itself, I think that in the beginning we started the catering company before we created the checklist that really helped systemize it. Systemize it a little bit. Um, okay. We were like going from um, going, oh, okay, we need this, we need this, we need this, we need this, we need this. But with the invention of our a little more automation of having statements of work but it had all the details and all the ingredients on it so that we could make sure that we had it all in the car yep um sounds familiar it's really I, I really and you for lemons tiff or, oh my god we forgot we forgot parsley you gotta go with that yeah always yeah <laughs> the grocery store stop on the way to an event yeah absolutely sounds great you're making me feel so much better about myself jennifer oh yeah i mean that catering catering is a rough job i mean oh. I remember I did an event for Alice Cooper and Mark Tarbell told me one time, he says, I don't want to cater because catering, once you get off site and you don't have everything right uh, there, yeah. it's rough. It's tough. Yeah. I've got my little box and I keep all my stuff now. I've learned to just have it already pre-ready to go. So I don't have to remember anything. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I have, even when I do private events and things like that, I have a little like olive oil, salt and pepper, liquid aminos, balsamic vinegar, I have some spices included and that because I'm like, oh, I always forgot these. Yep. <laughs> the so failure makes you fa failure makes you remember these little kits. Yep, exactly. Oh, this sounds so good. I, I feel so much better about myself. So okay, so here's another thing that I'm always intrigued <laughs> with. <clears throat> I spend a lot of time on my grafting table, which I'm sitting at right now. And while I do, I either have sports on or I'll get to Florida sports and I'll have the Food Network on. That's how I really learned a lot of, about cooking is watching the Food Network, okay? Which is way better than the home improvement shows because I think it's a little bit more accurate in, in reality than the home improvement shows where they, they do a whole kitchen remodel in a day and a half and only cost $10,000. Yeah. Okay, that doesn't, that isn't really true. So, but the, the true, Food yes. Networks are, they're pretty good. Uh, the competitions, have you ever been in a competition? Um, in culinary school, we did some competitions, but I have not done a competition since then. That's stressful. That's all I can tell you. That I agree. Yeah. But then you look at like some of those shows like Chopped and so on. They play on everybody's emotions and, and things like that. I just, oh, yeah. uh, I don't, I don't, I don't thrive in those types of environments. <laughs> yeah, it looks so stressful and dramatic. So do you, are, do you like the Food Network? I do. Yeah, absolutely. I do watch a few shows. Um, I just, I will say, but, oh, that's a good question. So, you know who I really like and what is her name? Well, there's some of my favorites are Barefoot Contessa. Okay. I like, her. I like the Pioneer Woman. She makes. Pioneer you know, Woman. I do really like, oh, what is the girl's name? There's uh, a Jada, of course. Did she make? Not that she makes. She was a judge on Chopped and she does um, traveling shows. Hmm. Oh shoot! I don't watch Chopped. Um, let me see if I can find her because I have her on my, I have her on my Hubu channel. Yeah, no, I love the Food Network. It's it's. I always find new ideas and new twists, and and I love cookbooks. I must have a million cookbooks. Oh, I've never... gotten rid of a lot of cookbooks because I just I will store every single one of them, and I live in a condo now. When I moved out of my house and moved into a condo well, let me tell you something it was a fine space that you need to say save space with yeah so yeah. when you get when you want inspiration for a dish i mean you do you find cool things like on pinterest or what where, where do you go oh my gosh i gotta try that that looks like it's something really cool and i'm gonna put so this Pinterest, in not so much but i will say that um i really like um i really like a couple of magazines and one is oh gosh why can't i think of the name of it <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the day <laughs> i'm trying to think of well, it used to have so it used to have like a forever subscription to bon appetit but i kind of got bored with that because it became mostly ads yeah um, okay you know another place i find a lot of fun ones is um not pinterest what's the other one flipboard is that what it's called tiff Something like that, yeah. Yeah, I like, I, I, yeah, Flipboard. I find a lot of cool stuff on that. And so I, I, I've, what never, I like heard to do, of, I've never heard of Flipboard. Flipboard is very cool. There's, and you can kind of go by search, you know, different it's an things. app. And you find different people that are posting different things. So it's, it's a fun app. I really like Flipboard a lot. 
but what I what I'll do a lot of times is like, you know, I've got that my sounds like fun. It is. You you'd like it just based on what I've heard from you say today. But like uh, my Traeger, Traeger's got great recipes on their app, but then I'll combine it with something like like Bobby Flay. Like, oh, if I'm gonna make a brisket, okay. Well, here's how Traeger. I do like Bobby Flay's here's, channel. Yeah. Here's what Bobby Flay says. Here's what some other guys and I like to combine them all yeah. into like Me too. my own spin on on everything. Do you do that? I I do watch um, Bob. I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do that. I combine different things together. Um, But I do watch Bobby Flay's YouTube channel as well as what's the girl out of Italy. Um, Giada. Giada. Yes. I watch her YouTube channel as well. Yeah. So we Um, were hearing they got a new combo show together. That's supposed to be just absolutely beautiful. Oh, they do. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. It just came out. You just told me. Yeah. So I want to check that out. That looks, that looks fun. So I love our cooking classes. I love our cooking classes in Italy. And we've been doing some virtual ones here in Phoenix in our Candelaria kitchen. We want to get you in there, Jennifer. I understand yeah, she's scheduled for March, right? I understand yeah. you do. I understand you do virtual cooking classes. I do. Absolutely. Yeah, those are fun. I think I'm going to start with some simple things. Like, though, for this, this year, I think I've been working on, like, a new schedule. I'm going to work on, like... Uh, dressings and sauces like inexpensive fast sauces and dressings to do so people are not buying that stuff from the grocery Love store that. that is one of my goals is to get better at my sauces mm-hmm. so i will i will definitely partake in your uh virtual classes on sauces and, and your <laughs> stuff is you're trying to again you're trying to focus on chemical free organic so it'd be really interesting to see how you do some of that stuff yeah we'll definitely have you focus on that on our cooking class Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think our biggest uh, dressings are, we make a fantastic Caesar dressing, um, and people don't even know it has anchovies in it, and then, um, or a raw egg, and um, um, I made a new one the other day, I made a cilantro uh, orange uh, vinaigrette, and okay. it was fantastic in one of our, in one of our, in one of our meals for um, Feed Phoenix, so yeah, so we made, for salad dressing, it was fantastic. That sounds good. So my wife is gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free. Okay. So it's always tough when we go out to find, you know, something that meets all those categories. So do you notice when you, when you cater and stuff, I mean, do do you think there's more people with more allergies now than there were, let's just say 15, 20 years ago? Um, yeah, I do think that people um, ask for more allergy free type items. However, it's hard to determine whether or not allergy free means that they actually don't like it, yep. or they actually have an allergy to it. Because so we're really serious about our, our allergy or special requests, mm-hmm. because we pay a lot of attention to um, people that have real serious allergies, because we have a lot of kids that have allergies. And um, sometimes we have like I did a class one time for a group of people and they I asked for allergies asked for allergies and everybody said no and when I got there she goes well I have an allergy for shrimp but it's no problem I can just uh, remove it like that's not an allergy that's a that's not an allergy it's it's an I don't like because you can't have shellfish anywhere near your food if you have an allergy that's Um, right yep no and I get that because one of my favorite dishes to make is paella so obviously a lot of shellfish with paella, but I've, I've perfected a pretty good all vegetarian paella, which I actually. Oh, nice. It's really, really do you do, good. do you do heads on or heads off for the shrimp? Uh, if, if I can find the heads on, that's what I would prefer because I like the way they look. Yes, yes, I agree. I like mine to look very Spanish. I do heads on as well. Yep. Lily's Market. Oh, see, I haven't been able to find any good ones here. You have to tell me where that is. That sounds good. Lily's Market, Dobson and Warner. Oh boy, that's a that's a trick down there. But I, that's close to volleyball, so we have to go down there first. <laughs> head on shrimp some night. So okay, so another thing that uh, you pointed out was um, was your organic farm to table school lunch program. Tell us a little bit about that. That's pretty interesting. So we make school lunches for um, a lot of Mission Montessori schools, wow. um, and then for all the Mission Montessori schools, and then um, we partnered also with Dishes to You, as well as I have some private. Um, students at Rancho Solano and International School that I provide food for. Good for you. That's awesome. So we uh, we make food every day. The menu menu changes every week, and um, we have a lot of different kinds of sides. And yep, 
We just really enjoy making sure that kids eat good food for school because I mean, I don't know about you, but when I went to school, I had the like crappiest lunch program ever. <laughs> yeah, I, I brought my lunch almost every day in grade school. <laughs> it wasn't too good, that's for sure. So you mentioned travel. It sounds like that's one of your passions to do when you're not cooking. What what other things do you enjoy doing? How do you get away from it all? And what's your what's your reset button, Jennifer? Oh, my reset button is traveling and sailing, probably. Like to sail, huh? That's pretty. Yes, we are. Yes, we are both captains. My partner and I are both captains oh, on the wow. boat, and then, yep. And so we've sailed quite extensively, and uh, it's just uh, really nice. I mean, one of the reasons why I stay in Arizona is because I love the sunsets because it's the closest to what you can get living on the ocean. Yeah, that's true. So where do you sail? Um, well, we've sailed um, the Caribbean. We've sailed in um, the Mediterranean. We've I've sailed. When I did my original captain's license, I, we sailed from um, San Diego to Puerto Vallarta, wow. Hawaii, Hawaii, and back to San Francisco. So why don't we put together a, a, a big catamaran? How, how big of a boat can you sail? It's up to 65 feet. That's pretty big. Yes, yes. You're thinking can you about single hand, party, can you single you hand oh, I'm thinking about a party. Yeah, Tiff knows how I feel. Like, okay, let's he's, get some foodies on your he's boat. He's planning a party. <laughs> You're going to be the captain and the chef. <laughs> I, we party can sell that thing sailing. out in no time. We could really fill that thing in no time. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun. So that's really cool. I, 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 I would have never guessed you to be a sailor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we've ever Love had the water. Guess. Love the water. Yeah, that's awesome. So do you have any trips planned? I know COVID's still here, but what's your, what, what are you aspiring to, where are you aspiring to go? Um, right now we don't have anything planned. Um, McKelly's dad is 95 and he's in Milan. And so we're just uh, waiting for COVID to be over and figure out what's going on with the rest of that. Yeah. Milan is awesome. We finally spent a little bit of time there the last, what was it? Two years ago, we went there for the, um, the design show design week or whatever it's called. And, uh -huh. uh, fantastic city boy was it fun just to walk around and the square obviously is beautiful but it, the side streets is just fantastic so, absolutely <laughs> but we love Italy that's one of our favorite places to travel to um what else what else can you tell us about you Jennifer what else you got cooking pardon the pun so because of COVID we uh, myself um Dory Morales from Green Living Magazine and um Mike from Agave Farms, we got together a, um, what we call the Fresh Food Collab. Right. And so because there was so much food that was abandoned right after COVID started, restaurants were all closed and everything yep. happened. We got yeah, together I and saw for, that on the news. for over the, over, um, I think it's been almost a year and a month now, a year and a month now we've been, we've been um, actually not the year and a month. So in April, it'll be a year, April, no, March, it'll be a year. We mm -hmm. started gathering food and creating food boxes and taking it to homeless. Mm -hmm. And we still been, we still do it every two weeks. That's excellent. Food from Agave Farms or different farms? Different too? places. So St. Mary's provides some food. Um, we have donations from other farms. And we have a pretty strong volunteer network that shows up. And we make boxes and we build boxes, probably 800 every two weeks. Oh, and what was the name of it? <laughs> um, Fresh Food Collab. Are That's you in need of more volunteers? Always in need of volunteers. I can actually, so you That's go to the We Are UFE Urban Farming Education website and you can volunteer. All right, we'll add that link to the show notes. Yeah, oh, is. awesome. That is so awesome. So we talked about the uh, Food Network chefs. Who are your, who's some of your local favorite chefs? Oh, well. And um, businesses. Let's see, local favorite shelf. So Danielle um, from Breadfruit Rum Bar. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Mark Tarbell. I really enjoy his food a great yep. deal. Yep. Um, and, oh, what's his name up at Elements? Yep, yep, Bo McMillan, yes. Yep, um, he's good. Um, yep, but I mean, as far as farm to table um, chefs I really really enjoy and you're gonna I hate when I have to remember names I really do <laughs> oh, I remember, one of my favorite names. farm to table is Chris Bianco oh Chris is good too yeah absolutely yep, yep. 
His little Chris Prado always has good stuff. Simple menu, but boy, is it, is it good. I do like that. Yes, absolutely. Stick to the simple. Yep, keep yep. it simple. How do we get a hold of you, Jennifer? How do we find you? Oh, you can contact me at jennifer at witnessingnature.net. Okay. Um, you can call me at 602-625-5828. Or you can go on our website, witnessingnature.net, and do an online request. That sounds awesome. Well, we're definitely going to get you in the Candelaria kitchen for a virtual cooking. Oh, I can't and, wait. Uh, I think we'll. I think I want you to do some of your sauces. I think that would be a lot of fun. That would be fun. I, that's what I'm thinking about doing. Yeah, because I was looking yeah. at your classes that have been done, uh -huh. and I haven't seen a ton of sauces or yep. dressings. So I'm thinking I'm going to do some sauces and some dressings that are fast, easy to do, and everybody thinks that they're super hard, but they're really not. I love it. That's exactly what we need. That's perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Tiff, do you have any other questions? No, I'm excited. I'm like thinking about what I want you to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much and keep up the great work and thank you for helping the community like you're doing. That, that means a lot to us. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys so much. I'm totally thrilled that I was on your show today. <laughs> thank well, we'll, you. We'll get you back. We'll get you in the kitchen. We'll have some fun. Awesome. All right. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Great job. And we cannot wait to have you in our Candelaria Demonstration Kitchen to whip up some of those sauces you were talking about. Okay, we have some great podcasts coming to you in the weeks ahead. Stay tuned and thank you for continued listening. I want to give a big thank you to all of you who have been listening to our podcast as our listeners keep growing nicely. Thank you also for the ratings and reviews. Remember, the first review we get dated February 13th or later will receive a free Candelaria Collection Pasta Maker. So give us some love on those ratings and reviews and make sure you direct message or email me that you post the review so we can get you your pasta maker. We love giving those pasta makers away. We do our best to inspire living in everything we do, from our podcast to our cooking classes to our tours and, of course, with our Candelaria Design Homes. We are putting together the... McMinnville, Oregon Pinot Noir Tour. In fact, we'll be going out there in April to kind of do the pre-tour. We're set to uh, have that tour start in April of 2022. And our Italy tour of this year is slated for a go. We are going to make it happen. We've got a pretty good crew already signed up. I might have two spots left. So if you're interested, please direct message me and we will see if we can get you on, on the tour and on our way to Italy. Okay, have a great week, everyone. Stay safe. Happy Valentine's Day. And let's all live our lives with love, compassion, grace, and positivity. See you next week. Because Inspiring Living is all about the people and the organizations that inspire us, we are excited to have Monogram Appliances as one of our sponsors. Anytime we do a new kitchen or a kitchen remodel, Monogram Appliances are what we recommend to our client. Their appliances are the definition of luxury meticulously detailed using the finest materials and an ownership experience that is second to none. This is how Monogram is always thinking ahead and inspiring and elevating the kitchen experience. Because at Monogram, they don't just elevate one thing, they elevate everything. I want to say a big thank you to my good friends at Stockett Tile and Granite Company, where your project is our priority. I want to thank the Stockett team along with so many others who contributed to the success of our fabulous demonstration kitchen in our new Candelaria Design office expansion. You will have to check out our online video cooking classes and our kitchen is amazing. I've had the pleasure of working with the Stockett team for nearly 40 years on many spectacular projects and trust me, they are the epitome of excellence when it comes to tile, marble and granite work bar none. Their skill and customer service is impeccable, and the bottom line is they are just good people. I have traveled with, dined with, and just had good times, both personally and professionally, with Dave Stockett and his lovely wife, Becky, and they are the best. When it comes to your next tile and stone project, make sure Stockett Tile and Granite is a part of your team. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. We encourage you to write a review, screenshot it, and share it with your friends. Please instant message it to me and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We thank you for listening, and we look forward to sharing more insights to Inspiring Living next week.